Let's go. Let's do it. I don't know what this overcast is going on here, but McKay is here. Yeah, looks like we're uh, coming to buy a brand new car. <laughs> McKay. So uh, we were searching the old Facebook marketplace, you know how that goes, and uh, came across this guy, this guy Michael here from San Diego. How you doing today? <laughs> so Michael, he's got an interesting collection. Well, first of all, he's got a tractor here which nobody in Havasu owns a tractor, really, per se, because uh, that is about as out of place as a lawnmower. But anyway, this is what we came to look at. Check this out. 1915 Model T. Oh, this thing is super, super cool. So it's got the tanks on the running board. Um, yeah, a little turtle shell. Just a neat, neat. Of a, check this two-end tractor out. So Michael said he's had a couple of these, and he, he kept this one because it's the tightest, nicest one that he's ever owned, and he's restored a couple. And, of course, the Model T, you know, it comes with all kinds of parts. So uh, he's been collecting parts to... Uh, Put this car together and do different things with it and uh it comes with all these parts on this trailer there are three engines here which is super cool so this one is definitely probably a 12 it doesn't even have a starter on it so can't wait to run the numbers on that one but this one caught my eye it's got a performance head on it. It's got a two barrel downdraft manifold, a Model A manifold adapted to it. Um, it's got a water pump on it and a Bosch distributor. So somebody was hot rodding this one. And I know they were hot rodding it because they've taken the brake out of it. They were using the reverse for the brake. So they use the reverser for the brake, take the regular brake out. Pretty interesting. So kind of excited to see what's in that motor. This one looks like just another spare for the 15. So I'm going to go see if we can make a deal on this thing. And uh, we'll drag it over to the old school garage and get it running. All righty. We got our first load of junk from the Model A store. I mean Model T store. Oh, Model T. Model A's. Model A's. Model T's. So I got three engines. Got a pile of wheels. And... uh all of this stuff, which I'll sort through. Should be some gold in there. What do you think, McKay? I think it's time to build a T. You look like you're swamping. I am. It's warm <laughs> out. See, he, McKay's got to grow some lizard skin to adapt to this uh, western desert again. It's been too long since he lived here, so uh, he's uh, not used to this 109 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. What's up? We're on our way over to uh, attempt to move a Model T. Garage. Morning. How's it going, Michael? Pretty good. What the heck? How are you? Good. I'm going to call this the farmer's garage. You got two tractors. Yeah. Nobody in Havasu has two tractors. Yeah. So, yeah, somehow we'll... Uh, Move some stuff here and dig this thing out. And uh, it's kind of uh, kind of stuck in gear, I guess, is what it is. The the neutral the neutral thing is not releasing. But as long as everything's fastened together, I say we just run it. So we'll get it dug out and see what we can do. Yank them rope. Might as well tow a hundred year old car with a yank them rope, right? 
Might as well. This is a jet ski anchor rope. Hmm? Well, it's not a jet ski. I guess these are for like side by sides. Light vehicles. Well, I consider well, that a light vehicle. You sit side by side in it. <laughs> That's the original side by side, <laughs> right? I think we'll use a bigger soft shackle though. See if we can hook this without bending the front end here. Don't run the rope over McKay. <laughs> well, I think we're ready. I gave McKay about four instructions here on how to drive. We'll see how it goes in a convertible. Looks like I get to be the first one to drive the old T in a long time. We're gonna get rolling. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> it's your first time driving a Model T? First time driving a Model T. <laughs> first time driving this one for 20 years. <laughs> yeah, could you hear the wheels clicking? Yeah. Yeah, clickety, clickety, clickety. They're all loose, they're all falling apart loose. So yeah, I think what we'll do is unhook it and push it up here. We'll unload everything and then, uh, I don't know, try to make the old girl run. What a hoot and holler and good time. in there looks brand new. That's not good though. That's not good at all. So it's appeared what has happened is this second gear band has come off. Well, I call it second, but it's actually low. So I took this band apart. This little bracket right here attaches to the band. And it makes it to where you can remove them, but that right there is disconnected. So I'm gonna have to uh, get down in here try to pull that band up and see if I can hook that back on. If I can hook it back on, then uh, we should be in luck. If not, we're pulling this off. This is the hog's head. And that's going to be a lot of work. All them bolts have to come out. This has to come off. The exhaust has to come off. This has to come out, which is essentially your ignition. So, I don't know. We'll see what we can do here. The case should be back in just a minute to help. And we'll figure it out. So that's where it looks like gas to me. Not sure I would call that gas. Turpentine. Paint thinner. Wind. Ooh, it's nasty. It's yellow, orange, green. Got some crud in the tank. Ugh. Damn drive tube. It's running down the drive tube and still dripping on my forehead. Ugh. <clears throat> stuff right there. Yeah, that fuel's probably from 1974. <laughs> well, it doesn't smell like ethanol fuel, but it smells bad. Hey, watch yourself. Might spill a little, I don't know. You got the thing out, right? Yeah, the valve is completely out of the tank. Oh, man. Yeah, is that washing that out? Yeah, that's coming out brown. Yeah, that's the stuff. I don't know what the... Oh, man. Yeah, that's 
still ugly coming out of it. So, this thing is plugged solid. It's brand new, but it's plugged solid. And, uh, the tank is just dirty. Alrighty, I don't know how we did it, but, uh, I guess all we have to do is put the brake pedal back in. Got all my stuff sitting over here, so it doesn't get hot because everything in the sun right now is getting hot. The shade is working its way this way. Freaking McKay, he uh, he wrestled a wire in there and managed to pull the band back. Well, we got the clip back on. So that clip right there was the one that was broke. That band is now working. Seems to be hooked, seems to be pretty good. I don't see how it came out. I think they knocked that off when they put the hog's head on. I don't think it's been on for quite some time. So anyway, we got one more band here to put together. That's the, that's the braking band, which is this one. So we got this that goes in here. Sure seems like it's forward. Yeah, everything's a little bit hot right now, McKay. It's hot. The temperature's a little bit up on everything. So, I don't know if you can just put your finger on that and just, no, right there if you can. Can you do that? Because that's where I'm going to be fighting you on it. So this is how you adjust the lining on the brake. And this forward one is the reverser, which I think it was pretty good. So we'll get the brake good, and then we'll probably start it and run it a little bit and adjust the low. So that's pretty simple how old Henry designed this thing. Oh yeah, she's squared now that back on and then we'll uh, check the float device. All right, let's see if fuel comes out the metering device there. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, we'll steam that out. We'll clean the whole car. Get all the bird duty off. Maybe clean this little raggedy top. It's starting to stretch out a little. This needs to be nailed back down, this here thing. Those nails have come out of there. Got to fix a couple things. Got to fix them wheels too. The wheels are all loose. They're a little creaky. Well, all you do is you take this here thing and you tighten these here bolts up. They get real good in a quick hurry. Funny thing is, it takes five sizes of wrench. It's like these these bolts were handmade. Like I need eleven sixteenths <laughs> for that one. Five eighths works for that one. Nine sixteenths on this one. That one is good and loose. Oh yeah, they're all good and loose. This is like maintenance. You gotta do this as you go down the road. See that? Nice. Way better. Nice. That's one wheel down. Let's go ahead. Quite commonly you drive them and they, they come loose. I'm sure it said in the owner's manual. Tighten the wheels every hundred miles. They're still kind of hanging up on the clutches, that's for sure. Get her started up. We'll free that up. Bad thing is the back ones, you got to take them off because they're inside the brake drum. Oh, I got you. So we got to pull the hubs apart on it. But dude, I just tightened the old front end right up. Front end alignment's done. Yeah. We've kicked and scratched and fought. 
got the coils buzzing. Yep, the coils are buzzing. We're ready to put gas in. I opened the valve. McKay's tired of working underneath the car. Already. He's like Model T wore out. I'm kind of Model T wore out too. It's 100 and probably what, 114 degrees today. Yeah. About 50% humidity. Feels good if you know what I mean. We're starting to get some shade here though with our canopy. Just in time to see if this old girl will crank up. What do you think, okay? You think it's gonna start right up? I don't know. If the timing set right, I don't see why not. Dude, it ain't running 40 years, are you kidding me? I don't expect it to start with like good luck. We got fuel coming. I'm gonna open that uh, drain on the carburetor and we'll see see if we get any fuel out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some pliers is going go underneath here. Yep. Arr, we got fuel in the carburetor. Oh, we got fuel. Well, needs a little pressure, I don't know. I didn't put very much fuel in it, so. Nothing. Well, that was pressure, so. That should have come running. That's not good. I'll take this off and have a look, I guess. This one's being ugly, McKay. We're gonna have to look on that registration. See what this old feller's name was that owned this car. We'll have to name this car after him. Oh, yeah, that's it. Ooh. That doesn't sound good. Shh. That's just a broken baffle. <laughs> we might have to put a new tank in it, okay? One way to get that battery out. This is a World War II nine volts, Iowa. Nine volts, battery dry. Order number. I don't know, but it's it's toxic. Hit it with a hammer. It's a dry type. <laughs> I don't know what we got floating around in there besides debris. Yeah, that's a baffle. gross we're gonna set that aside for a minute and uh, I think what we'll do is get our fuel can and uh, hook up a hose we'll do something different that's not gonna work I'm gonna have to find a fuel tank that thing's rotten She's rotten. But I think if we get fuel flown, we're ready to start this rig. A little fuel leak back here. Other than that, I think we're about ready. A second here, and let me choke it. Get this carburetor all wetted up. Going live. right probably gonna put a fuel system in it and pull it this sucks this hand crank is too hard everything's too tight yeah cranking the transmission and the rear end and the motor too i think the motor's tight i think all of it's tight okay so I got this tank cut open, and uh, looks like Jimmy's here. I uh, 
I don't know what this is, but it looks like dirt. I mean, it looks like sand. I don't know where that come from, but there's a lot of it in there. The tank looks terrible. So, I just uh, got sick of it and cut the end of it off. Both these baffles were broke loose, so I'm going to have to weld them back in place. And, uh, I don't know, get the rest of that sand out of there. So, we'll uh, figure that out. What are you doing, Jimmy? Um, we're going to dinner. Are you cooling the air conditioner off I for am. me? Because I am burnt what, up. What are you doing? I'm cleaning the gas tank out on the Model T. I can smell it. Dude, I... McKay was here earlier and we fought through it. And that smells foul. I finally just said, I'm mad. I'm cutting the end off. What's is that, that model? Model T. Oh, that's kind of. <laughs> that's. that's, <laughs> that's I've got disgusting. a lot of it out, too. Wow. Yeah, it looks like dirt. I was going to say, it looks like sand. What is that? It looks like sand. It feels like sand. It walks Some, and talks like sand. Someone, it might, sa someone sabotaged that, huh? What does Judge Judy say? If it walks like a duck and right. quacks like a duck, it's probably, probably a duck. A duck yeah. um, come look at the car. So, it hasn't been on the road since 1974. What? Yeah. The last, that's, a long, that's a long time. That's a couple days. Dude, that's... The last big. registration was 1974. That's almost 50 years, dude. That's a good 40. What Man. is that? 48. Yeah. How cute is that? Yeah, it's your luggage compactment. And it smells, it smells old. Yeah, it, it is old. <laughs> this thing is, this thing is more than a hundred years old, Jimmy. That is so cool. It is kind of crazy. We've been trying to make it run all day. We finally gave up. Yeah. We're going to have to pull start it. The, the bands were all out of whack in the transmission and I, we got all that straightened up, but it's the bands are too tight. I love your straps. Yeah, you like That's that? That's awesome. I got leather coming, but I figured, you know what? I got to have that top stretched back out. So right. I don't know if that top's been up in quite a day so or we can two. do some pull starting, huh? We're going to pull start. That's going to be fun. Yeah, That's going to be fun. Especially because I'm not really certain that it goes into neutral. <laughs> so once hey, it does start. You know me, I'll drive up the back of anything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Jimmy! <laughs> just unhook the soft shackle as you go by. That's it. Yeah, we'll put a hook on the front and you can just unhook it, right? Look at the leather belt. Dude, that's cool. Yeah, isn't it cute? That's There's cool. so no cool. no electronics in this. That's awesome. It straight up has a little little tickler battery and really? a magneto. That's it. Wow. There's no generator. There's no I mean these are these are uh wick lights. Yeah, say and, that old. yeah it's wow, that's a, it's amazing. pretty uh pretty old and crude. But yeah, well, Jimmy's here to pick me up to go get some dinner. I'm about burnt out from being out in the sun, so we'll get that tank cleaned out later on tomorrow and weld it back together, and I don't know, maybe we'll be pulling it down the street to get it running. Alrighty, I got a little science project I'm playing with today. This is a Model T coil box. This came with my Model T parts. I cleaned all these boxes up and I've been going through and I've been testing them. I have it set up as a positive ground 6 volt here on my bench. And I got a single spark plug hooked up to one lead. I'm using the number 3 hole. Anyway, what I'm doing, put you down right there. This is your, this is your grounding reluctor, for lack of a better word, or distributor. There's a wiper in here that goes around and makes contact with these, and each time it makes contact, it grounds a specific coil, and then you get spark. So this is a this is probably I guess this is a pretty weak one actually. It I've been measuring these and putting a mark on them, seeing how far they would jump electricity. This one will jump an eighth of an inch. Got one over here that'll jump a half inch. This one here I marked it a quarter. So these just slide down in here and these little contactors make contact. And then uh, he ground it and it. That one's really loud, but it actually has really good spark. So it's got a nice blue spark to it. Um, a couple of those I 
can get them to work for a minute, but then they overheat. So this one here is a really good one. Somebody's clear coated it, which is kind of a good idea. It seals the box a little bit. And uh, I think this one's pretty strong. Yeah, that one's really strong. That one works really good. So I've got these all organized, and uh, so far I have not electrocuted myself. I do have one here that'll jump half inch. This is the strongest box out of them. And uh, it too has been clear coated and it's in really good shape. So yeah, this one, this one will definitely throw some electricity. So pretty cool how that works. The original MSD right there, multi-spark discharge. Nothing can go wrong now. <laughs> Yank them rope. Till we go up, Phil. Yank them rope for the win. Let's uh, let's see how she does. I guess can't get in on this side, McKay. Yeah, you got to get in on the right. Um, let me grab a can of starting fluid. I won't have no signal, so you'll just kind of have to. I'll wave to you. I'll be like, hey. I know you're not you're not gonna be able to you won't be able to hear me so we've cranked and cranked and cranked until my, I've got a blister on my hand I uh, I have pretty much just give up so I know we got low compression on one cylinder my thought was uh, let's just put a rope on it and tow it car doesn't have a starter it's pretty hard to hand crank I uh, I know hand cranking it, we, uh, I'm going to run off all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got a can of starting fluid, I got a choke set up, I, uh, I'll put you guys like right there, that should be kind of western, that's neutral, that's low. Timing in it. Just a purring. I think we got the uh, direct clutch a little bit, a little bit loose. Actually, it's a little bit tight, so it's slipping a little. She's knocking a little. Well, it warmed up a little bit and it started hitting on number four. 
pouring water on it, but it's 120 degrees here today. The cars, they're not happy when it's this hot. It's sounding pretty good, though. For a 107-year-old car. So, Number uh, number four is a little weak, but it's chugging. Burn. Right up till she doesn't. Right up till she says I'm done. <laughs> well, it runs. It's alive. It's hot. The magneto doesn't work, so we're gonna have to recharge the magnets. I think we're gonna have to put a water pump on it here for the desert. It. Uh, I mean, it's pretty warm there, but it's uh, definitely uh, definitely not circulating water. But uh, it started. Number four was kind of low on compression. Now it seems to be firing. Um, we're going to juice it up, see if we can get it to start off the hand crank again. And uh, I don't know. We'll go from there. I think we need some more adjusting on the bands, but honestly, we need to like go drive it so probably this evening when the sun just before the sun goes down we'll get it lit up and go put some miles on it around town see if we can burn the bands in and get it somewhat happy fire dried up dude yeah like within the end of the driveway 12, 12 I could feet. hear I could hear pa -pa 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 off a couple cylinders yeah. so yeah not bad for a hundred and seven year old car Dig it. So the motor knocks pretty good. I've got another motor in there. Came with the car. We're gonna go through it and check it, check all the Babbitts, shim it. We'll end up swapping this motor out. There's something wrong in this transmission. I don't know what they got wrong, but something's not shimmed right. As it gets hot, it tries to drive off. So I think the six pack clutch in there is just shimmed too tight. It may loosen up, but I doubt it. And then, uh, We'll put a water pump on that other engine when we put it in. I'll redo that radiator and we'll get this thing to where that it'll run down the road, be trustworthy and reliable. But for now, later that same evening. Are you ready to go for a ride? Yes. In a hundred plus year old car? Yes. So the 1915 runabout. McKay and I have worked on it all day. We pulled it down the street. I think I've got it to where it'll start off the hand cranker. I got blisters on my hands, so I'm using a glove to start it, but uh, there's kind of a process to get the old girl going. So I'm going to take Desiree for a ride in a 107-year-old car. So we're going to see if it'll idle up the hill and maybe watch the sunset on the way back. So we retard the timing, get a little bit of throttle, and then... The ignition here, you have to turn it to the battery position. <sighs> I think people were a lot stronger a hundred years ago. Of course, it's so hot today. Like 118 out here. Come on, girl. It's okay. The worst part of it is, it don't have a starter. It's all you got. You either push it, or spin the wheel, or that. 
Ecco. Come on. Let's go. Let's do it. I don't hear the noise anymore. Yeah, you gotta turn it. Ah, oh, yeah. Gosh, dang it. Come on, girl. We'll be wore out before we get it going. The good thing is, once it gets running, pretty reliable. Bad as being a top spike peak, huh? huh? Feels like the air is thin.
hard to a stop. I'm wore out. So this is how the windshield works. So I fold this thing like this. There you go. Oh. That was air conditioning. See, I had the air conditioning on. That's the air conditioning. And then the top, you know, it's convertible. You can fold the top up because it is a runabout. So to get out, you just open that little tiny wagon door. People must have been really small back then. That's all I got to say. They were really tough and really small. Hey there, everybody. Don't forget to go to MOSG.com and get your trucker hat and your shirt. I know these cool new biker patches. Yeah, a little Velcro on. Sew that little Velcro on. Stick that on there. He can be a, he can be a bad biker. MOSG with toe mater. Don't forget to go to Yankum Ropes to get your multicolored Yankum Ropes. They got them in military colors now. OD green like this shirt. Also like a desert sand. Um, use code MOSG for 5% discount. And uh, you'll have a green patch and a green Yankum Rope for your Jeep. It'll match tow Thanks for watching.